Hi guys, welcome to Prophecy Unfold. In 2024, we're truly seeing things escalate into the crescendo of the return of Christ. But many people ask me, you know, it's been 2,000 years and many people have been saying Jesus is coming. What's so special about this generation? And this is to show you the breakdown of how we could be very, very close and how God's prophetic timeline is always true down to the day. Now, you will need pen and paper and even a cup of coffee um, to get through this. You'll probably end up watching it twice to get the actual notes but by the time it's finished i promise one thing you'll have a total understanding that we're very very close to his return like always i'll ask you to do two things is to watch it in full to get the full context but also smash the like button so that someone who doesn't know christ may come to the understanding of who he is 2024 for for a prophecy unfolding is the year that we're trying to get 300 bibles up and sent out to people who need to hear the gospel of jesus christ and that's why we've done this little trailer that's not all we also have a goal to distribute 300 bibles to those who need them your contributions will help us towards achieving this goal every bible we give away has the potential to change someone's life for the better together we can make a difference in the world with your help, we can continue to spread the word of God and reach those who are seeking guidance and comfort. Your donations, big or small, will make a significant impact. Together, let's make this mission a success. Thank you for your support. May you be blessed abundantly. But have a listen in full and let your ears hear and your eyes see that we're truly coming close to the return of Christ. The prophet Ezekiel was called upon to undertake a number of strange performances, one of which was to lie on his side for a total of 430 days. Each day was expressly to represent a year of judgment against the nation. A number of commentators acknowledge a difficulty which appears when one attempts to apply this, specifically to Israel's history. Seventy of the years would seem to be accounted for in the Babylonian captivity, but that still leaves 360 years unaccounted for 430 years, minus 70 years. The 360 years do not seem to fit any period of their history. The Leviticus 26 clue. It has been suggested by some that there might be a clue in Leviticus 26, where God indicates that, quote, if you will not yet for all this hearken unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your sins. Leviticus 26 to 18. In fact, this commitment is reiterated four times in that chapter for emphasis. It has been suggested that multiplying the problem, 360 years by 7 yields, 2,520 years, which is approximately the duration of time from the exile through the diaspora. This seemed rather contrived. Furthermore, it had bothered me since I never liked to use the term, approximately and God, in the same sentence. I felt that if it was meant to fit, it would fit precisely. Sir Robert Anderson, in his classic work The Coming Prince, noted that the Bible uses 360 day years in both Genesis and Revelation. However, I noticed that no one seemed to try to apply this insight to the 2520 years potentially suggested in Ezekiel chapter 4 in attempting to reconcile the 2520360 day years to our Roman calendar. One is faced with the discrepancies between the sidereal year and the solar year. The Julian year is 11 minutes and 1046 seconds longer than the mean solar year. In 1572, it was recognized that errors had accumulated to 11 days too many, and adjustments were required. In the Gregorian reform, September 4th was declared September 14th, and the formula for leap years was changed to exclude centuries unless divisible by 4, and millennia by 400. Thus, to 520, multiply by 360, day years contain 907,200 days. Remember this number. This number is accounted for on our current calendar as 2,483 years, 9 months and 21 days. Great. But what do we do with this? Where do we begin to apply it? Terminus ad quem. Another problem occurs when we examine more closely the Babylonian captivity. There are two different periods that are candidates. The servitude of the nation and the desolations of Jerusalem. Each of these was prophesied to be 70 years in duration and many assume they are synonymous of each other. However, they are not. There were actually three sieges of Nebuchadnezzar upon Jerusalem. The first siege began the servitude of the nation and was prophesied to last 70 years. And it did, to the very day. When Cyrus conquered Babylon, he encountered the amazing letter written to him by Isaiah a century and a half earlier. 
which addressed him by name, highlighted his meteoric career, and predicted that he would free the captives. His astonishment resulted in his releasing of the Hebrew captives to return to Judea to rebuild their temple. The vassal king that Nebuchadnezzar left later rebelled. A second siege resulted in his uncle, Zedekiah, being appointed to the throne. The prophets, Jeremiah and Ezekiel both went on to warn that if they persisted in rebelling against Nebuchadnezzar, the city of Jerusalem would be destroyed. Yet Zedekiah ultimately yielded to the false prophets and rebelled. A third siege resulted in the destruction and desolation of the city of Jerusalem. The desolations of Jerusalem also lasted 70 years, until Nehemiah ultimately succeeded in getting the authority to rebuild the city of Jerusalem. This, too, was precisely 70 years. To which of these two periods should we apply the 2,520 years, the servitude of the nation, the 70 years of servitude, to be consistent, should be reckoned as 25,200 days, or two days short of 69 years on our Roman calendar. The first siege of Nebuchadnezzar, in 606 BC, began the servitude of the nation, which lasted until the summer of 537 BC. So if July 23, 537, BC was the time of their release. The calculation formula, minus 537 years 7 months, 23 days plus 1 no year for 0. So when you calculate forward from July 23, 537 BC and add 2,483 years 9 months 21 21 days, it brings you to May 14, 1948. Wow. On May 14, 1948, the nation Israel was re-established on the world scene. A remarkable coincidence, Isaiah appears to have highlighted this very restoration. And it shall come to pass in that day, that the Lord shall set his hand again, the second time to recover the remnant of his people, which shall be left, from Assyria, and from Egypt, and from Pathros, and from Cush, and from Elam, and from Shinar, and from Hamath, and from the islands of the sea, and he shall set up an ensign for the nations, and shall assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather together the dispersed of Judah, from the four corners of the earth, Isaiah 11 11 to 12. Yet, there is another alternative application of the 2520 years, the desolations of Jerusalem. The third siege of Nebuchadnezzar, in 587 BC, began the desolations of Jerusalem, which lasted until 518 BC of August 16 518. BC was the completion of the walls of Jerusalem. Then. The formula is, minus 518 years 8 months, 16 days plus 1 no year 0. So when you calculate forward from, August 16, 537 BC and add, 2483 years 9 months 21 days, it brings you to June 7, 1967 wow amazing. On June 7, 1967, as a result of the Six Day War, the biblical city of Old Jerusalem was restored to the nation, another remarkable coincidence. It should be borne in mind that the starting dates are not known precisely to the day. More research needs to be done, but this certainly seems provocative enough to ponder. Whence Jerusalem, Zechariah predicted that the day would come when the entire world would be against Jerusalem, and that it would prove intractable to resolution. Even as this goes to press, a climax is in the making. Yasser Arafat has announced that Jerusalem will be the declared capital of a Palestinian state on September 13th of this year. Ahud Barak has indicated that he would annex the West Bank. President Clinton has called for a meeting at Camp David in the hopes of bringing this to a permanent resolution. Many are optimistic that some kind of permanent peace can be arranged. Most of us know, from a biblical perspective, that no real peace will occur until the Prince of Peace intervenes. In fact, the enforcement of a seven-year covenant by a coming world leader is the very definition of the 70th week of Daniel, the current peace sick process is virtually a guarantee of war because it is built on a false premise. It's based on the assumption that the Muslim interests can be appeased by reducing the borders of Israel. The Muslims, however, have made it very clear, before, during, and subsequent to the Oslo Accords, that they will be satisfied with nothing less than the extermination of Israel. They are insisting on what Israel cannot give. All we can do is watch the unfolding drama. Let us remember that, behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. Psalm 121-4 Perhaps an ostensible peace treaty will emerge on the international scene. We'll be watching with intense interest. It certainly does seem that we are moving along the classic biblical scenario, 
What a critical time to prioritize your Bible study time and do your homework. When I first came, when to, I this first came to this realization, I finished studying this over a few years here, a couple of different people on it. And by the time I compacted it all and realized that God's timeline, his prophecies, nothing comes back void. The reason that we get it wrong, the reason that we get it wrong is that our understanding can be wrong, or even the time can be wrong, because we know in Daniel the same prophecies were sealed up to the end. But I truly believe that we're that generation that's going to see his. Return. There is, cha chaos, there is going cha on the chaos going on in the world, but remember, God is always in, in control, control and keep the faith.